China Navy ships cruise Hong Kong's harbor. Naval boats patrol the South China Sea. And on the 15th anniversary of Hong Kong's handover to China, this was the scene as President Hu Jintao surveyed troops stationed in the former British colony. China's navy is building up from a long way down, but China's defence spending, especially on its navy, has been growing at double digits for 20 years or more now. So this is uh, the fastest growing navy in the world. It's pretty clear in this part of the world that China is on the rise. And alongside its growing wealth, the nation is making its presence felt by building its navy. It claims sovereignty in most of these waters, the South China Sea. And Chinese officials are keenly aware of the U.S. pivot towards Asia, competition over resources and regional influence. China's army, the PLA, is already the largest fighting force in the world, measured by sheer troop numbers. Here's how the world's number two economy stacks up versus America's seventh fleet, the U.S. Navy deployed in Asia. China has 62 submarines plus six nuclear-powered submarines in the region. The U.S. 7th Fleet, three nuclear subs. The U.S., one active aircraft carrier. China, none. China, 13 destroyers and 65 frigates. The U.S. 7th Fleet, seven frigates. But China's building its presence. This recently opened garrison, a military island out in the middle of the South China Sea, extending the nation's reach. China's test launched its first aircraft carrier, a refitted Ukrainian ship to be used for training. Japanese forces have joined U.S. Marines in the Western Pacific for a months-long military drill. On Chinese state TV, a watchful eye on U.S.-Japan joint military exercises right near its own border. If you listen to some of the more hawkish voices in the military, they will tell you that they're scared of uh, naval encirclement. Others point to the importance of maintaining national pride, playing the role of a great power on the world stage. But I think most of these initiatives come from economic priorities. The main worry now is whether the recent posturing could lead to military conflict in Asia, a growing standoff over territory in the South China Sea. And protests getting ugly in the East Asia Sea over rights to islands claimed by both China and Japan. There is a small risk, and I think it's a growing risk, that an incident at sea could escalate into conflict involving China and one of its neighbours. And I think that's what we're all worried about. Rising threat or extension of economic development, China's navy may be growing fast, but it has a long way to go before it has the technology to rival global powers. An arms embargo from Europe and strict U.S. laws forbidding the sale of weapons to China will make it tougher for China to develop its arms technology. But with China's leadership transition due later this year, military voices from Beijing have grown louder. What started as a naval buildup in the 1990s to contain Taiwan has become a much more active force. Tara Joseph reporting for Reuters.